So now we are going to be see the resultant of two unequal. So in this case, the two unequal parallel forces, two unequal parallel forces acting in the opposite direction. In the last we do have seen that there is going to be equal pa parallel forces are acting. Then we do have calculated the resultant components when they are in the same direction. But now in this problem. They are unequal parallel forces. Means unequal means here they are going to have a two different magnitudes. That's going to be the P as well as the Q. That suppose two forces, if you consider, they are not in the same magnitude. They have a different magnitudes, and they are unlike parallel forces. Here they are moving in the opposite direction. So from this one, I'm going to be taking the one rigid body. The graphically, I'm representing here. So then, what will happen in this case? I'm going to be taking the point A, and this is going to be the point B. So we need to take the two parallel forces. They are unequal in magnitudes. That means the P is going to be greater than Q forces I have to consider. So then they are in the opposite direction. So suppose in this case the force P is going to be acting in this direction and the Q is going to be acting in this direction. So can you see? I hope we are satisfied the the given condition. They are unequal parallel forces. That means the P and the Q are not equal. They are one force is going to be greater than other. P is greater than Q, or Q is greater than P. Also, we can take it. So then, in this case, they are in the opposite directions. So one is moving upward, one is moving in the downward direction. So then, we need to find out the resultant component. So where is the resultant component is going to be existed? So when it is moving this direction as well as this direction, so then the surely it is clear that the resultant component is going to be existed away from these two points, not in the between these two points. So then, in this case, consider the force P as well as the Q. So the resultant component R is equal to. We know that the P is going to be greater force we have minus Q is going to be existed. So then it is clear that a resultant is equal to P minus Q. Then which side is going to be resultant is going to be existed. The position of the resultant it may not be in the middle of the AB, but it is going to be shifted towards the. Uh, the maximum magnitude of the forces. So that means I am going to be taking this to the point C. And the resultant component, which direction it will move? In the direction of the maximum force, it is going to be move in this direction. So that means this is going to be move here. So that means this is going to be the resultant component. So then, if you want to find out this part, what I am going to do? I am going to be taking the moments at C. Is equal to zero. So then, in this case, what will happen? The distance between these two points, we need to assume that that's going to be the AB is the distance for this uh, the P as well as the Q. The distance between the from point C to the point P. So that means, so, so, sorry, to that force that is going to be the AC, and to this one is going to be the uh, BC. So I'm going to be taking those forces. In this case, this is going to be moving in the So anti-clockwise direction. This is moving in the clockwise direction. So the moment is going to be nothing but the force into perpendicular distance to the point of observation to the line of action of this the forces. So then, in this case, what is the forces we will have? That's going to be Q into Q into BC, BC, and this is moving in the opposite direction. That's going to be P into P into AC. We are going to be getting. So then. Q is going to be the force. Is BC is the distance between these two. This is going to be the line of action of this force. And here also the line of action we do have. So BC is going to be the perpendicular distance to the line of action of this one. AC is going to be the perpendicular distance. So then I am going to be taking here the P by Q is equal to. That's going to be BC by AC we are getting. So from this one it is clear that this is going to be. The magnitudes of these forces is inversely proportional to the the distance of this observation point. In this way, we are going to be calculating the resultant component. This is going to be unequal parallel forces opposite direction. So then, that is going to be P minus maximum force minus the minimum force we need to take it. Suppose the Q is going to be the maximum force and this the P is going to be the small force. Then R is equal to Q minus P. We need to take it. It is not mandatory that every time we have to go with the P minus Q, which is the maximum force, and then which is going to be the small force, then we are going to be subtracting. At the same time, if that is the case, then what will happen? This is the P, and this is going to be the Q we do have. Then where is the resultant component? That's maybe existed over here. That is the resultant component when the Q is going to be greater than P. Is clear?